Dopamine is not only making us happy, but it is the molecule for craving and motivation. It is the desire for an expected reward. Dopamine is our subjective currency that tracks pleasure, success, and how well we're doing in life. In a sense, it's one of the most powerful molecules in the human species, as it shapes the world and is the driver for innovation and power. Knowing all this, shouldn't we all be very conscious of how we leverage dopamine? And if we don't leverage its power, multi-billion tech companies will. Industries like gaming, entertainment and social media invest millions of dollars and hire some of the most intelligent people on earth to find creative ways to leverage dopamine in people, to make them more dependent on their products. Short-term gratification, gamification, surprise, sex and sugars are just a few examples of how industries can tap deep into your inner mechanism to shape our decisions. This brings us to the question, what can we do to regain control? Well, understanding our inner mechanism and how dopamine works is the first step. We all have a certain baseline of dopamine circulating in our brain. For some people, this baseline is a little higher and they get motivated and excited relatively quickly and they have a seemingly endless drive. For others, this baseline is a little lower and it takes a little more to get excited and motivated. Additionally, some activities and foods spike our dopamine level relative to our baseline. For example, when we eat the bar of chocolate, our dopamine level rises about 1.5 times above our baseline level. The activity and the pursuit of sex and the consumption of porn increase dopamine level about two times. But the flip side of these dopamine spikes is that they drop below baseline shortly after, with one exception. So bear with me if you want to know more about that. And the lows that follow a dopamine high seem to be in proportion to the highs one experiences. One example of that is if we reach this lifelong goal where we soar the dopamine sky, we can fall into a depression once this high feeling wears off. This is very counterintuitive, isn't it? Because everybody thinks that a person who experiences this dopamine fall has every reason to be happy for the rest of his life because they reached this huge goal or milestone. But it turns out that isn't the case. On the contrary, the high volatility of dopamine spikes and low can lead to addiction, an unhealthy lifestyle and a complete depletion of dopamine. This is why we eat entire cookie packages, binge watch entire series and scroll endlessly through our social media feeds. But too much of the same experience blends the excitement and we get less and less of the dopamine spike. But at the same time, we still expect or hope for it, leading to ever decreasing drops in dopamine until we do something reflexively without getting any joy from it or even feeling worse. We all can relate to this experience where we got this great expectation for something that was not met. This letdown's frustration is actually much bigger because of this discrepancy between expectation and reality. All this leads to the question of how we can escape this toxic circle for the hunt of the next dopamine kick. One answer to that is to go on a dopamine fast or a more popularized term, a dopamine detox. The idea is to let time normalize our relationship with dopamine inducing foods or activities like sweets, porn, social media, entertainment and video games. Sound boring? Exactly. That's what it's supposed to be. Many things in life that we find boring and don't excite us result from too many overstimulating things. For example, after eating a bar of chocolate, whole foods taste like nothing. But if we abstain from refined sugar and processed foods for a while, we can appreciate the taste of fruits and vegetables a lot more again. This is not only true for sugar and salt, but also for dopamine inducing activities. If you immerse yourself in video games and TV shows too much, everyday life and activities can seem very dull 
and I'm speaking from experience. But imagine being stranded on a lone island for some years. I bet you would get much more joy from a random conversation, an iced cold drink, or a light switch than you would now. And this isn't a glass half full, half empty kind of question. It's a question where you can appreciate the glass itself utility, the texture and the aesthetics. Now, do you think that you are free from the class of industry that are using the high volatility of dopamine spikes against you? Then test it out. Go on a seven day social media news and any kind of gossip fast. Quit eating refined sugar and processed foods for 30 days. Abstain from porn for a month. Implement a smartphone free morning or day. Don't go shopping except for foods and necessities for 30 days or so. The duration on how long to detox yourself from dopamine inducing activities or foods can be very individual. You can tweak them to your lifestyle, but I would suggest taking a time that feels painful to you to overcome this longing for the next dopamine spike. If you're watching to this point, you must think that dopamine is evil and that I don't have any fun activities in my life. And I certainly don't want to demonize dopamine and rob you of all joyful activities or foods. So far, I have covered how dopamine works and how you can protect yourself from others exploding you. And now we can move to the next step and talk about how we can leverage dopamine to our advantage. There are mainly two levers that we can pull to leverage dopamine for better motivation, focus and happiness. First, we can increase the baseline of dopamine circulating in our system or the dopamine receptors who are sensitive to dopamine for this matter. And second, we can leverage the power of dopamine release when reaching goals or milestones to increase ongoing motivation. So what can you do to increase the baseline of dopamine? To be honest, I never felt as motivated and well on a really consistent basis as when my wife and I were living almost a year in nature, hiking different long distance trails around the world. We would rise and set with the sun and as I later found out, seeing sunlight within the first hour after waking releases dopamine. And doing it consistently, meaning daily, will also increase dopamine receptors, so your body is more sensitive to circulating dopamine. Host of the explosively popular podcast Huberman Lab, Stanford professor and neuroscientist Andrew Huberman has become the advocate for early morning sunlight viewing. You ideally sunlight. Morning sunlight viewing, it's the best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism, <laughs> is to get natural light in your eyes early in the day, to get this sunlight viewing early in the day. He advises 10 to 30 minutes of daily early morning sunlight viewing. 10 minutes if it's sunny and 20 to 30 minutes if it's cloudy or overcast. And of course, don't look directly into the sunlight, don't wear sunglasses and don't view it through a window. Taking cold showers. Yep, taking cold showers will make you motivated and happy. Maybe not before and during it, but certainly after. As a certified Wim Hof instructor, it shouldn't surprise you that I will cover something about cold exposure. All jokes aside, taking cold showers will increase dopamine release about 2.5 times above baseline for hours and without the usual dip that follows after such a dopamine spike. That's a dramatic increase. Just to put it in perspective, that's about the same increase as one would get from taking cocaine but without all the negative parts. And it's also much more legal and accessible for most people. Avoid viewing bright light at night. This goes hand in hand with viewing bright light in the morning. When our body shifts to rest mode, viewing bright light after 10 p.m. or so will activate a brain region that drastically reduces dopamine in our brain. If you need to use lights in the night, just dim them. So now that we have the tools to establish a healthy level of dopamine baseline, 
let's talk about how we can manage and leverage dopamine peaks. One of the essential things that I learned when I was researching this video is that dopamine is subjective. And this is true for habits like exercise and also for reaching goals and milestones. Our brain doesn't know external rewards. Also, whether we get dopamine released when working out highly depends on what working out means to us. For example, I see a lot of people who think they need to train or they need to work out because they want to reach this external goal like losing weight or getting this six pack. But the problem is that they don't like the process of getting this external reward like working out. Many people try to combine this process like working out for example with things that bring them joy. So people would listen to music or podcasts while working out or drinking these pre-workout energy drinks or reward themselves with something after the workout. All different things to try to trick themselves into liking to work out. All for the sake for boosting motivation. The problem is that layering too many sources of dopamine can lead to a dopamine crash afterwards which ultimately undermines ongoing motivation. And I'm sure you have experienced that too. I sure have. So instead of solely relying on external motivation, find ways to identify yourself with the process of accomplishing your goal. This is what James Clear from Atomic Habits means with identity-based habits instead of goal-focused habits. It follows the be, do, have framework. In order to have something, the external motivation, you need to do something consistently. And therefore, you need to be a certain type of person. And most people only focus on the having and wonder why they can motivate themselves to do something about it. So next time you set the goal, ask yourself what kind of person would achieve such a goal. For example, you want to have a great marriage, Ask yourself what kind of person the perfect husband or wife will be. And I'm referring to you, not your partner. If you want to have this perfect body, then ask yourself what belief system related to food, exercise and body is necessary to reach and maintain such a goal. These are just some random examples to show you the point. The important part here is that it will shift your perspective on becoming and away from having. And this, by the way, also changes the definition of success. An external goal has a binary definition of success. You have it or you don't have it. Whereas the process of becoming has a continuum. Every action strengthens the identity associated with your goal. That's why I like the quote from Brandon Sanderson from The Way of Kings, Journey Over Destination. This is when we get dopamine release while being in the process of working, making progress and putting in the effort. This is the holy grail of leveraging dopamine to your advantage. And just to be clear, that's no easy process. It's, it's in fact really hard. The entrepreneur and author Derek Sivers puts this very nicely into words. If information were the answer, we would all be millionaires and have perfect apps. Deep down, we usually know what to do, but we haven't become the person yet who does what needs to be done. You can't lie to yourself and tell yourself that you had won when you actually lost, but you can easily find things where we improved and make that the win. Use your brain to tell a story where you are the hero on a journey. And in a good story, the hero becomes the hero by overcoming many challenges. Make the overcoming of these challenges the source of your dopamine and you will change the narrative of your life. Before you leave, I have created a short PDF to summarize this video's points and a little more to help you leverage the power of dopamine. It's completely free. You can make a donation if you'd like but you don't have to. You can find the link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.